Hello, everybody. This is an interview with Max Rempel, PhD, and my name is Safira. Today is February 19th, 2019. It is a Tuesday afternoon, and I'm grateful that Max and I could manage to meet at this time. We are both on the West Coast, uh, Arizona and San Diego, respectively, so that's nice. And so, I've, I'm from New York and I lived on the West Coast, lived in Germany 20 years, came back and lived different places and done all sorts of interfaith, inter-religious, inter-metaphysical, inter-whatever you want to bring people together uh, with different um, ideas and to kind of work towards unity and get things done. And so on this journey is how I met Max Rempel. Um, <laughs> I had heard from a friend that there was a website he began called humancolony.org. And in the beginning, Max was doing meetings with several people who had also obviously met him also in different ways and um, started on Skype and then moved to um, YouTube. And he and Jim Charles have been collaborating together for many years with channeling, and they recently wrote a book called From the Galaxy with Love, a handbook for lightworkers. And Max has also written other books previously. In 2011, Max wrote Celestial Science, which I'm going to be asking him about, among other writings. And so uh, we're going to be asking, for those of you who don't know Max very well, I met Max back in 2014. We're going to be asking some questions about himself and his journey. and how it all got started and where he's going from here. So, well, <laughs> hello. Oh. So I would like to ask you, uh, because even I don't remember, <laughs> and I know a lot of people don't know, um, when did you come to America and why? That would be my first question. Uh -huh. and, okay. Yes, yes, go ahead. Right. So. Um, I'm now 55 officially, a few days after birthday. So I was uh, 32 when I came. It was uh, 19, 1996, I came with my family. In 1993, I came by myself to check it out. Mm. And I brought my invention, like a, a bulky device, uh, and uh, tried to sell it and actually I sold it but uh, my business uh, English wasn't good and my business uh, partners were uh, uh, not very experienced so I um, I didn't earn much money and it was basically it was uh, not very successful but it was successful in a way that I visited California and um, uh, Manhattan and um, and Long Island so I, I was very impressed mm-hmm and I, I'm assuming that even though at that time it may not have been as successful as you hoped, if it's, it'll come back, it is something that's going to come back and then be much more successful than it was in the beginning. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Actually, you, you know, I, I wasn't that, that bright at the moment. I, uh, I'm still growing. <laughs> but at the moment, I was so much, you know, as, as a beginner, I started from extracting DNA, and I was mm -hmm. so interested in the process of extracting i didn't even think about this function so it was mm. an extractor so i don't think mm. and after i finished i grew over it and you know i uh, i decided i would not come back and work on automation of extraction of dna it's just too primitive so oh. no i'm not coming back to to the beginners or to be to the beginning oh. level. first i okay. was like a, a technician and then i was uh an engineer, then I grew up to a postdoc, which is basically a, re a researcher in training. And fi finally, I'm, I am uh, on a free flight actually doing what, what I am planning and what I am finding interesting. Mm -hmm. I think I grew in the science, I grew like several levels higher than what I did back then and uh, around when I was 13. Absolutely, uh, yes. I think you mentioned when I first met you, you had something to relieve pain you had invented an apparatus to relieve pain. Is that what you were talking about when you said you tried to sell something in the beginning? Uh, how do you say it in English when there is a, the phrase is almost perfect, but the time uh, 
completeness of the task is uh, overstated. No, I'm working mm. on those. I'm working on those. I didn't, haven't okay. finished it. I haven't completed. Uh. So it's uh, that would be one of the. How do you say? Um, so we, we know that there are three fields which are three types of electromagnetic field which are beneficial for you, which is a red light, mm -hmm. uh, with an infra near infrared, uh, which is like mm -hmm. you know, whatever you see on the stoplight. That's 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 it. Uh, whatever you, <laughs> if you have a mouse with a red light coming out, it, it's that's yeah. it. It's very helpful, mm -hmm. very healing, and but you need to get a lot of it. Mm. So this is not what I invented. It was uh, discovered in 1968 uh, by a Hungarian scientist uh, using lasers. So it's about many years later. I think it's like 40 years later or something. So 50 years later. Uh, now, um, the second light is, uh, it's called millimeter wave. It's almost unknown in the West, but there are Chinese and Russian companies which make mm -hmm. millimeter wave devices. And these are pretty tricky because um, it helps you open your chakras, but uh, then you have to do the actual yeah. healing. So it's not doing the healing by itself. It's more like mm. a tool for an energy healer to, to do the work. Mm. And the third mm -hmm. one is, it's called pulse electromagnetic field and you can buy lots of those on Amazon. Uh, these are usually amethyst mats and mm -hmm. some of them are pretty inexpensive, like $300, but typical is pretty expensive, three two three thousand dollars but wow. uh, many reiki healers um, do that in, and uh, other types of healers do that investment and actually uh, buy a mat and then do the reiki on the mat and again it helps to keep the energy up so so these are invented by others and i'm playing with those inventions trying to improve on them but my key uh, focus is uh, the dna resonance which is still uh, experimentally, it's still in its infancy. There is very little, almost nothing done in that direction experimentally, but there are lots of theoretical works. Uh, mm -hmm. that there is a DNA resonance, and that's where I think the, the next biggest breakthrough will be. Uh, okay, we're going to be coming oh, back to that. Yep. Um, oh, forgive me, go ahead. Uh, for the healing. So once we get mm -hmm. the DNA resonance working, uh, understanding the sequences, then we we will be able to do much more in terms of healing, up to growing new organs and growing new limbs and re mm. reshaping the body, because that's the power of DNA. So far, we are a little bit behind on that. But energy healing mm. by itself can do miracles, but the devices I still needs to catch up. That's so wonderful. Wow. I'm going to be asking you a little bit later more about DNA resonance. Uh, first, I'd like to ask you, so, I know you're, you have a brilliant, brilliant mind, and I know you don't like people saying that. <laughs> Probably embarrasses you. <laughs> but I think you have a very brilliant mind, but you also have this amazing, gentle, loving, spiritual side to you, and you also do channeling. And you've taught a lot of different spiritual um, disciplines or spiritual lessons on different aspects of spirituality. So my question is, Oh, hold on a second. Let me, let me address the mind mind issue because you know it sounded like a little overstated. So okay. I uh, I'm trained and I intentionally train myself to to get out there and get ideas from out there from the other side. Mm -hmm. and for that I tune myself up to be very sensitive to what comes from out there. Mm -hmm. And when you are sensitive, there is lots of junk that comes to your mind, and I'm making mistakes just because I'm too sensitive to, to junk which comes from out there. And filtering mm -hmm. it out is really tight, tough. We're using mm -hmm. the, the human brain. I'm still using mm -hmm. the human brain, right? So it's, it's a choice <laughs> to be mm -hmm. tuned up and trying to catch up things and connect things which other people didn't connect. So one mm -hmm. of the approaches is, you know, whatever is considered truth, you doubt it, you question it. And whatever mm -hmm. is considered incorrect, you, you amplify it and think maybe there is something there. So... Mm -hmm. So uh, as a result, I'm making much more mistakes, many more mistakes than people who are sharp down here, grounded and do everything digitally and can really make no mistakes. Like warriors, warriors, they, they cannot afford that mistake because they will be killed. So mm -hmm. uh, hunters, they're very, very precise and I'm the other mm -hmm. way around. So don't expect mm -hmm. anything, uh, like don't expect any perfection from me. You know, imperfection okay. is perfection. 
<laughs> yes, this was not meant. Uh, I appreciate that. And like I said, I, you're too humble to kind of accept all those compliments. And I didn't mean them to be unrealistic because, yes, of course, we have all our characters and all our weaknesses. I'm also uh, intelligent but scattered and unfocused. So that can yes, hinder. brother soul. Yeah. Is there soul? Yes, it hinders. It hinders a lot. But I really would love to know because you are, uh, you have a scientific mind, and you do have a technical mind, from what I have gathered until now, and I know you a little bit until now. So, when did you very first have an extraterrestrial experience, and how did you come to even write the book Celestial Science, which oh, is thank a you. that's a great question. Uh, so. I now remember, and I actually I remember it before, but I didn't pay attention to that. I was about 15 or 16, and uh, I was walking down the street, down the hill on the street uh, near my house, and I looked at the sky and saw Pleiades in Russian, they, in uh, old Russian language, they're called stojars, meaning 100 mm. fires. Mm, nice. And, oh, and, beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I decided consciously making a choice that I'm from there. It wasn't a, a discovery, it was a choice, right? So, I, I mean, I was always interested in that kind of questions, and that's what spooked my uh, uh, friends. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, for me, it was kind of obvious. I was surprised that other people weren't interested in those things. Mm -hmm. But um, on the other hand, I remember very clearly that uh, I came to America, there was a, like a, a, a launching of the love workers and they discussed some sort of aliens coming to Florida, I think from Mexico, but I didn't understand the news and I didn't understand what they said. I just said, I don't believe in aliens. And they laughed because they were not <laughs> aliens. Alien. So, <laughs> so, That's hysterical. So uh, I was I, 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 why didn't I believe in aliens? Because I was so much in science fiction uh, and they described the aliens as anything but humans, like clouds, mm -hmm. like everything you can see in Star Trek, which is non-human, like, mm -hmm. like those things. And I was thinking mm -hmm. that, that those funny aliens, funny looking aliens, which are on, um, uh, on, um, uh, you know, pictures, they, they just look to humans. It's very unlikely that other planets would have something like that. So, mm -hmm. so it was a like logical conclusion. And many, many scientists who would come from science would agree that it's unlikely that, you know, humans would come from space. They, would look, they should look like octopuses or ants or anything except. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I didn't believe in those kind of aliens. But, um, mm -hmm. right. Uh, 1999, I uh, make, many people had a, uh, transformation at that time and for me it was understanding that my science path is came to the dead end I had all the tools pretty unlimited resources I had a technician eager to work and I couldn't get the results right the mm. genetics just chemistry based genetics just didn't give uh, the expected answer and because of my project I was looking at real data I believe the data my project suggested there was some other influence. Mm. I mean, that was a logical scientific conclusion. My project mm. suggested there was some other influence on human behavior other than the DNA sequence. Mm. Uh, looking at the DNA sequence and I see some other influence. I just could measure mm -hmm. there is some other yeah. influence. Yeah. And uh, I was always interested in astrology and here I uh, started studying it a little more and then I did a little experiment on astrology, uh, looking at uh, that time, the predecessor of Facebook, I don't know, the older people remember, it was called uh, Live Journal. And there people would give their date of birth and, um, and their interests. And uh, I was looking at the zodiac sign correlation between interests. I mean, I was mm -hmm. doing the math. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, it was uh, also a predecessor of Huckel in a way that I was able to organize a, an online project where, where enthusiasts would be uh, would be collaborating on doing the project. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that. And, uh, we saw some correlations, and as usual in astrology, it's uh, pretty hard to catch them because there is so many. Uh, you know, when you try to 
it's hard to explain the the, the mechanism, but you know, it always evades the, the being caught and, and displayed to the humanity. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. found after I did uh, the initial uh, calculations, I found that uh, Gocklin, uh, the French scientist, or Gocklin, mm -hmm. uh, published a lot of serious studies in the 60s. And now there is a, a brand mm -hmm. or branch of astrology where people uh, do the same kind of research very seriously using computer simulations of planets and... Wow. Mm -hmm. and uh, large databases, they exchange databases with uh, behavior behavior profession and uh, exact dates. Uh, Western culture like France and England, they record the time of birth very precisely. In Russia, we just have the, the date and no time in, in the record. Uh -huh. So, so um, and they, they have it uh, for many generations. So you can look at the professions and people. So it's a nice science. So wow. I was interested in astrology uh, in 1991, uh, 99, 2000, 2001. And, um, and that kind of, make long story short, I will skip some, some developments, but 2009, yeah. Yeah. 2009, I uh, read the book, which is The Field by McTaggart. I recommend it mm -hmm. highly, still very, very profound, very modern book. It's mm -hmm. only 10 years old. I, I still recommend to read it. The Field by Lynn McTaggart. And, uh, and listening to it too, it's like uh, knowledgeable. Um, and uh, it explained much about quantum nature of the reality. Oh, okay. And the main experiment which impressed me was that you can take a crystal, a tiny crystal, send it through uh, basically a, an optical grid mm -hmm. and it will split uh, the crystal would split and pass through through two doors or two windows and live in a diffraction pattern, or it's called interference pattern, mm -hmm. on the uh, measuring device. Mm -hmm. So even the crystal made out of 100 atoms, so now I think they make even bigger crystals, have the, yeah. the wave property, they can resonate, the whole mm -hmm. thing can resonate, they can split into two parts and resonate. So, so that was, was a very good demonstration that we are basically waves and we can mm -hmm. we can uh, resonate and do things and after i closed the book i said let let me check out the aliens i mean the logical jump was very weird but for me mm -hmm. if they're quantum well, let's check out our oh, aliens i don't know maybe it sounds <laughs> not too logical but for me it was it was my birthday and uh, <laughs> 2009 let's check out aliens i opened youtube and and then I couldn't sleep. I, I was researching the aliens since then, and uh, I got sick because I recognized the, these uh, gray photographs of grays. I recognized them, and they made uh -huh. me sick for some reason. Wow. I recovered maybe half a year later, but uh, I uh, recovered as a, as a believer. Uh, actually, I was believing from, from the moment of recognition, but I recovered, and uh, I, I gave my present. At the same time in February, I um, went to a I searched for, for my city, which was Rochester, New York, and, mm -hmm. you, and I found the group. I visited the group right away, and I met there uh, uh, the person who's Rosemary, who was speaking at the uh, at the oh right at the dance floor. You, you saw it, right? And yes, yes. she was speaking exactly what what she was like the same story. I mean, her story didn't change since then. And um, so I, it was even bigger um, initiation into the topic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, How did you meet her? How did you meet the her? Group, the group, there was an interest group, UFO interest group. Oh, oh in Russia, okay, I get it. She was speaking there, I just entered, she was speaking, she was a presenter. Oh. Okay, thank and, you. Uh, and um, after that, I, uh, I presented my, uh, my uh, presentation on, uh, on evolution because the main problem is how do we know that evolution comes from, we come from the genetically, we are related to uh, the life on Earth. We are very similar mm -hmm. to mice, to mm -hmm. others. They are very, very, very similar. And how is so it possible that, that the human looking <laughs> aliens come and they're similar to us, you know, in appearance and also we are similar to mice. I mean, that was a weird uh, mm -hmm. uh, paradox and I sort of resolved it 
through seeding, cross seeding, and cross mm -hmm. interconnection. So basically, evolution goes, but once in a while, aliens come and, and tweak it. Mm -hmm. So now <laughs> we know how it happens. But at that time, it was uh, you know either that or that, and then we had to merge the two. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wrote that into a book. That's about it. Oh, so the teachings in the book about reincarnation and all, yeah. all the different types of teaching, um, how did you develop that understanding? And, and how has that understanding of celestial science, 2011, evolved since then until the book from the Galaxy with Love, which has a similar premise of extraterrestrials and spiritual life and growth, ascension, and things like that, but I'm sure you have evolved much more since then. How would you compare your experiences between the two books? Oh, there is like, uh, first question was, how did I get to the uh, other points of the book? So yeah. the alien part was about, was came from combining U4, crop circles, uh, paranormal research on YouTube, and much of that was from Bashar. So I, mm -hmm. I listened to all Bashar I could find, and. It was mostly from Bashar. Mm -hmm. But before 2009, I was still researching the soul, the spirituality, the oversoul. So this uh, mm -hmm. metaphysical part, which doesn't involve aliens, I, I, I was researching that before. So I was already primed to that. I just, it's the aliens, which uh, the human looking aliens, which were very suspicious, but, but mm -hmm. then I accepted that as well. Mm -hmm. And the answer was that, um, yeah, we are seeded many times and uh, we, we evolved and we evolved meanwhile. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. uh, evolved, modified, evolved, modified, evolved. Mm -hmm. modified. So that was mm -hmm. my answer. Okay. And uh, much of the evolution, I think, was happening in parallel on many planets. So maybe mm -hmm. repeated the evolution. We and other planets might, might have. Uh, so there was. Then we have to accept the manipulation of time. So there's like archetypal evolution and. Mm -hmm. Evolution on our planet may might have uh, followed the archetypal evolution on different planets in different times, something like that. Mm -hmm. And anyway, uh, so spiritually I was primed, aliens are researched, and um, at that time I was thinking that I'm uh, speaking mostly to non-believers and try to prove with references mm -hmm. that these things are true. So it was more more like a scientific paper. I gave gave a lot of references and. Well, everything that I read or watched on YouTube I referenced in that book. So Celestial Science has lots of references. Mm -hmm. And then um, another book was I spoke to a, a, a young teenage girl, a daughter mm -hmm. of my friends. I was doing Reiki on people and, and did Reiki on her. And she was clearly like a, a very advanced hybrid. And she didn't need any proof. She didn't need any proof. So she mm -hmm. wanted the other way around. She wanted, you know, to learn as much about how things are without, you know, me uh, convince, trying to convince her. She was already a believer. She just wanted more information. So mm -hmm. the idea was, how about we write the book for this kind of people who don't need convincing. We just need mm -hmm. uh, to tell the story in very simple terms, how things are, how mm -hmm. things were, uh, the mm -hmm. history. The, the situation without making it too dark or too bright, just uh, neutral. It's like, mm -hmm. like, like would you, you would explain it to your own uh, uh, computer? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. if it is a smart machine, you just you know it wants information, doesn't want any emotions. So that was. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Right. So that was the, the book from the Galaxy with Love. Of course, there is yeah. like a lot of love emotion, but. Um, yes. There yes. Is no, I, I repressed all the emotions trying to convince anyone. <laughs> yes. And also, it's spliced with Jim's channeling. So uh, thanks for, to everybody who did the transcripts. Um, we edited the transcripts, make them pretty and uh, spliced the story, which is a textbook, basically the story with a transcript. So it's like yes. uh, a spliced version. Okay, so my question is, in the celestial science, you quoted and you referenced a lot of other teachers. And in um, from the Galaxy with Love, this was your own experience now. So you went from learning a lot from others to being able to teach it yourself because you apparently 
had experienced all of these things that you're speaking about, <clears throat> what would you say, would you agree with that, first of all? And what would you say was the deepest understanding that guides your life even now? Or did I ask that? Open-ended question. There is so much to say here, which I, <laughs> now let me say something specific. Uh, I keep forgetting the name of, of the friend of Lakesh, but at some point I invited the aliens and a friend of Lakesh came and um, I didn't see him, but I felt him coming inside me and I was in his body and he was in my body. So mm. uh, I was completely awake in the middle of the night and I felt myself in, uh, in being in two bodies, in my body and a very wide fat with fat fingers uh, body of someone else. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, in the beginning, I was very scared because I recognized the nightmare from my childhood. It was like mm. being completely helpless, tied, I mean, unable to move. Paralyzed, yeah. Paralyzed, yes. Yeah. And, uh, there were huge, huge things happening which were out of my control. Mm -hmm. And I was scared and I was thinking, am I sick? Is it like the sickness mm -hmm. which uh, I think in the childhood I was sick uh, with some fever, fever and um, mm -hmm. high fever oh. and nearly died from... from oh, from was it like, like rheumatic fever, for example? Something? Yeah, something, I don't remember the name, but okay. yeah, like a bad flu. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I was like, I was near death and there was that fear. But uh, here wow. I felt that my body is just fine. Yeah. And I thought, oh, maybe that's aliens coming. And I decided, if this is aliens coming, then they're welcome and I'm okay. I can survive. I, they will take care of my body. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I uh, calmed down and decided to be positive about it, it was fun. It was like a, a roller coaster ride. Right? You, you know you're safe. At least you assume, mm -hmm. you, assume you decide that you're safe and, you know, try to ensure. <laughs> but, you know, I hope to, to get more. I hope to get... Um, you know, a conversation, a trip on a ship, I didn't get any of that. So everything else mm -hmm. is from somebody else's experiences, like mm -hmm. Rosemary's experience. I interviewed J her and James Borg, um, who, who was there. And uh, I, I ran a, so, uh, an abductee support group in Rochester. So we had nice people coming and sharing their experience. And I was mm -hmm. the one who was, uh, you know, a typical researcher, knows everything, but never had his own experience. <laughs> But you facilitated right. those have that to come together. And now because of you, you facilitated Jim Charles to gain the confidence and the platform to be able to channel the aliens who first contacted you and wanted to speak through you. But then they found Jim and said, here's a great team. <laughs> Jim, Max is like the hardware. Jim is like the software. And we're going to be able to communicate to the world. And it well, was that's a great question. Would Jim uh, come the same way if I wasn't there? I, I it could, if it was his fate, it probably would have happened eventually. But it would be like just somewhat different. Yes. Who who, who knows? But I mean, you really. I have often said to myself, and to Jim, and to others, I need somebody like Max in my life. You know, somebody to just come in and help me, give me the confidence, set things up for me sit me down, say, you just do it, I'll take care of everything else. And that's what you did for Jim, and that was pretty amazing. So your role is just as vital, in my opinion, as anybody else who's having all these experiences, because you're like the, you're like the glue that brings it all together. And, uh, and the similar question, what, what would be happening if uh, Jim wasn't in my life? What, what would I be doing? <laughs> right? That's right, yeah. Uh, you Well, so... So would you say that um, between celestial science and galaxy with love, you've had more, definitely more contact with extraterrestrials and the spiritual teachings you have more applied in your life aside from just having learned them. Is that correct? Like the meditation and the different spiritual ascension processes that you speak about. Right. Um, yeah. what, what, uh, there is so much to say. And I, I know, and I was, I was going to get a specific... Well, let me say something specific. Specific, it's yeah. a decision, basically. It's a choice. Yeah. The, the choice is, uh, it changes a little bit as you learn. 
but basically it's a choice to be the hands of the hands and eyes of God and um, allow them uh, the higher uh, team of guides to to guide you. So trust okay. in your guides and trust in trust in the um, the intuition. And then um, as a, um, I think it was Krishna Das who said it. It's the ultimate. Or Ram Das, I'm, I'm a little confused now. I think it, it was Ram Das who said that, that uh, the ultimate choice is to to love this illusion. And I translated okay. I translated it as the ultimate choice is to love the ma- the matrix. We are living in a, a simulation, and uh, apparently, lots of beings are uh, labor labor to support the simulations, like the elementals and the angels and archangels and uh, Time lords, they all support the simulation. So, so they uh, they help this experiment to be run. And what we can do is to help them to harmonize the experiment and help them to run the simulation. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, if I understand simulation well enough, like. I know some people feel like the universe is just one big hologram and I don't know quite how to take that, which means it can collapse at any time. Is that correct? If it's a hologram. Again, can collapse it? A hologram can collapse at any time as well as expand at any time, correct? I think they have a backup copy. If, colla- if it collapses, they can restart. <laughs> okay. Most of the time I, f- I feel like there is a click in me and then it's like, boo! And that happens usually when nothing else is happening. So I'm thinking they just restore the system after the system upgrade or something like that. Wow. Because nothing is happening. I'm in complete quiet. There is nothing happening. And then I click. And mm-hmm. I just look around. It's a new world. It's like something a little bit changed. And there is a little, you know, the, the tape of the movie is, is glued, like, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I felt like we are starting a new tape. So I think mm-hmm. uh, they, they have the backup copy. Don't worry about collapsing. <laughs> well, it, it's more like I'm trying to rock the concept of a holographic universe, uh, what okay. it exactly means. And that's why I'm like, I just use that. It seems very, rather um, tenuous and flimsy, although I know that everything that looks solid is not solid. It's, it's energy. We only... Yeah. Take, for example, how they wrote Star Trek. There was a uh, Roddenberry who came up with some ideas. Then uh, there was like a lot of writers, maybe three or four writers, who would write different scenes, different dialogues. Mm-hmm. And there was management of the company who would decide which which parts would, would which of the scenario of the plots would go and which they would kill. And then at some moments, they, as the actors were playing, they would come up with new ideas and they would rewrite parts. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, so, and, and Woody Allen is famous for, uh, he has the budget for his movies and he usually <laughs> leaves at least half of the budget for rewriting and replaying. So he does the first plot, writes it, mm-hmm. the actors play it, then he would edit it and they would play it second time differently. So mm-hmm. I think that's the perfect model for our universe. I think it's uh, lots of different, uh, like, enormous number of different uh, entities are writing the plot and uh, and combine it. Mm-hmm. In one se- it's like Windows, like a, a complete mess of yeah. different codes. <laughs> so uh, that answers my idea about why uh, the flat Earth movement is so popular, because lots of code for our... Uh, Matrix was written in the Middle Ages where people believed the Earth, the Earth was flat. So they, mm-hmm. they wrote a lot of code for the flat Earth and that code is still in our system. So so uh, don't be surprised that, you know, you know I'm looking around at the floor, the Earth looks flat. So we're still using the code which was written back there. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting because I was wondering quite often, how does somebody, after seeing pictures of Earth from space, space station, how do they still uphold the flat earth theory? But yes, thank you. That explains it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so you've written some books and the most recent one, um, uh, Gap from the Galaxy with Love. You do channeling, you're doing your DNA research. Um, so can you please explain what is 
actually DNA resonance? What is it? In, in the simple layman terms that we can grasp it, where are you going from there with it? And where are you going with the extraterrestrials and the books and the channeling and the spiritual community, if I may ask? I think there were two questions. Let me ask the, the, the DNA one. Uh, okay. So, um, in, so this, this matrix, although it's illusional, it's simulation, but it has its own laws it, and the, the substance is pretty hard. So when I knock on the, on the tape, it's pretty hard. So it's, it's a well-programmed, very well produced little simulation. And mm -hmm. the life is, uh, is uh, a process within the simulation, but it's very uh, sturdy, reliable, nice process. I look at the window, I see the green uh, trees. It's uh, San Diego, so it's green. Uh, they have been <laughs> now, just came out like last three days. Uh, mm -hmm. So the life is uh, based on, um, on the code, and that code is very, very material. The DNA is a code for life. It's mm -hmm. uh, the physical program which allows the life to exist. And uh, now we, be, we believe that there is some spiritual program which is in, other, in another dimension, but in this physical mm -hmm. dimension, there is a physical DNA. We can extract it and uh, take it in a tube. We can actually see a white substance, which is, uh, which is the DNA. And you can put in a, into a sequencer. It will give you the uh, sequence of letters, which is A, G, C, T, in any order, like G, 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 A, 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 T, 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 C, T. Wow. So, and that sequence is pretty reproducible. As I said, we can sequence human, mm -hmm. a human and a mouse, and you can see there is like a, lo a lot of similarity there. Mm -hmm. Or if you can see if you sequence two humans, you can see just very tiny differences, maybe less than a fraction of a percent differences between the two humans. So it's very reproducible, very reliable. If you sequence mm -hmm. an alien, a human looking alien, you would possibly see maybe a few percent difference, but mm -hmm. it still will be very wow. similar. So DNA is very real. Mm -hmm. And I would say DNA is much more real than many other things, because mm -hmm. if it is, uh, there is a mechanism which makes sure it works. If, if the DNA is broken, the uh, being wouldn't survive. So mm -hmm. only good DNA is inherited. So it's very mm -hmm. stable. Now, uh, at the same time, if you look at its structure, it is um, a molecule. And mm -hmm. the molecules, as you know, are not very hard. They are made mm -hmm. out of clouds. DNA mm -hmm. is made out of clouds. It's, it's all a quantum phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It's uh, mm -hmm. uh, spiral clouds of electrons, protons, and uh, clouds of nuclei. But these are all... Uh, uh, I would say entities of uh, of the atom level, subatom level, which are mm -hmm. defined by quantum chemistry, quantum physics laws. So these are cloud entities, cloud uh, elements, yeah. and uh, they behave very much like quantum particles. They have very interesting properties of being able to resonate. Especially interesting is a resonation of spiral clouds because. Spiral clouds are, it looks like they're, they are specially designed by the, um, whoever designed us, the God, the evolution, the angels, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. high level beings, they're specially designed to be portals between this dimension and this physicality and higher dimension, because it oh. looks like they are capable of working as a laser or as a, uh, some other resonator where they accumulate energy and collapse it into a single point. And when you have a lot of energy collapsed into a single point or focused on a single point, like in the single point, mm -hmm. then you can uh, accumulate enough to, uh, to do trans-dimensional jumps. So, so I think uh -huh. DNA does it all the time by oscillating, decondensing de 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 and condensing the energy into a few few points in the DNA, and it would uh, transdimensionally connect to another dimension. So I think it is the main interface between uh, this physical mind and mm -hmm. higher mind. And obviously, I think in the DNA somewhere in the code, there is uh, also the 
uh, the veil is also encoded in the DNA. The veil is that illusion that we are separate. I think it's also yeah. encoded in our DNA. I think that there is a special trick making us believe that we are separate. Because in a dream, I think we are going there. But when mm -hmm. we wake up, there is a special process in the DNA which makes <laughs> you connected yeah. to believing that you are disconnected. I think yeah. it's a very artificial, uh, self-sustaining um, mm -hmm. mechanism which was plugged on top of what we had before. Part mm -hmm. of it is cultural, but part of it, I think, is in, in our design. Um, oh, resonance. What is resonance? It's like uh, if you have a, I don't have any, hold on a second. Oh, here. The resonance is my voice. Uh, mm -hmm. That is like some, some, something oscillating there. Yeah. And it travels through the air to the microphone. Yeah. And there's a membrane there which mm -hmm. captures the resonance, captures mm -hmm. the, the wave, resonates with the same frequency. Mm -hmm. Then there is a electronic device that measures that resonation and transmits it to you. Mm -hmm. and there is also your speaker which re which makes vib vibrate. Then the sound vibration comes to your ear, it vibrates there. Then it's transmitted through the neurons to your inner brain there. And I mean, from the ear closer to the yeah. center. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then there is like some recognition, which is another resonance between electric signals to mm -hmm. some patterns in your brain, which then match by resonation. So there's, on the way from here, from here to your brain, there is like several levels of resonation. So I believe that DNA resonance is uh, the key because there, there is a code there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I believe, is how the code is making the life happen through the resonance. Okay. Uh, it would, would sound um, heretical to the mainstream trained scientists because mm -hmm. They believe everything is kept in chemically. They cannot wrap around their mind about uh, yeah. Yeah. around the idea of resonation of DNA. But for people who are not spoiled by the mainstream education, I think mm -hmm. it's yeah, absolutely. Would you say the goal of understanding and making breakthroughs in this understanding is so that we can um, communicate better with other dimensions or make a jump? Yes. Uh, you too? Uh, the whole idea of it? I think the, that's one. And the sec so basically it opens the idea for metaphysics becoming uh, mainstream. Mm -hmm. And meditation becoming one of the main tools for mm -hmm. living, for life. But also it is, uh, I think it would save the humanity from deception. Because I think once we get uh, better understanding of resonation, we should be able to make helmets which would allow the synthetic telepathy. Wow. They don't have to be helmets, it could be anything wearable, but yeah. once you connect yeah. to uh, bit, 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 connect two minds with the technology, these two minds should be able to develop telepathic language. And once you develop it, I think taking the helmet off would allow us mm -hmm. to keep the telepathy going. So it is just uh, the learning might be uh, um, accelerated and facilitated by technology. Okay. Uh, some, some people are already telepathic, but uh, developing a telepathic culture, if we use technology for developing telepathy, it might speed up because I think we desperately, humanity desperately yeah. needs um, yeah. better communication than one we have now because current communication allows deception and, and that messes mm -hmm. up everything. Yes. Now you mentioned meditation as a way of life. Uh, would you say that it is through meditation that our DNA resonates in one direction or another as well? Is that why you mentioned meditation? All right, there are lots of different types of meditation. Yeah. But in general, it is um, switching from physical mind to more of the higher mind. So you mm -hmm. disconnect your attention from, from where you are here now, physicality, to some higher level. Mm 
Mm -hmm. and different types of meditation happen. Mm -hmm. uh, do astral travel. You can connect. You can heal. You can uh, do thing. Lots of things which cannot be described in physical language. So basically, mm -hmm. one of the goals of meditation is to move your attention somewhere on the higher level, mm -hmm. so that it cannot be described here in any way. So, but that's I would say maybe big part of the meditation work happens in the words which cannot describe. I mean, yeah. in the levels which cannot be described with mm -hmm. uh, So what was your question? Is it involved in a resonance? Yeah, does um, it kind of like, um, could you use meditation to direct your DNA frequencies from one direction to another? Uh, you know, in one, to have one goal or another? Some people, there have right. been studies yeah. which suggest that, yeah. I think, yes. Um, it's hard to... It's not simple to describe, but I think, yes, let me see. So what happens is when you are in the physical mind, you are busy with a lot of different um, incoherent, pro incoherent processes. Mm -hmm. uh, even now, like uh, I might look, sound a little bit coherent, but also there is a lot of repressive patterns which uh, help me to say what is appropriate to say and mm -hmm. prevent from saying which is unappropriate. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> there is a lot of repressive patterns mm -hmm. here as well. Yeah. Now when you go into meditation, you go into some place where it's okay to be harmonious and to open yourself up to the higher level. There is mm -hmm. much less repression and much more harmony. And mm -hmm. uh, I believe the harmony it's 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 a theory, it's not proven yet, but mm -hmm. I believe the harmony involves harmonious resonation of electricity in the brain, much more clean and pretty and harmonious. When that electricity uh, resonates with the DNA in, in, the, cell in the brain cells, mm -hmm. and when the, uh, the oscillation, vibration harm is harmonious, then this DNA is actually allows your physical mind to interface mm -hmm. the higher mind on mm -hmm. much clearer wavelength, much clearer mm -hmm. uh, language. Yeah. And, and that is sort of demonstrated in a little bit uh, by um, electric measurements of the brain. So when people um, meditate, their brain patterns become much prettier, uh, brain wave patterns. Just <laughs> if you yeah. Yeah. So, so it's kind of the yeah. brain wave patterns, but the mechanism yeah. I believe goes through DNA as a portal, not necessarily only through DNA. There is mm -hmm. uh, other other pretty structures in a cell, which is centrioles, centrioles, uh, mm -hmm. microtubules, cilia, flagell flagella is not in humans, but cilia, and um, and that's about it. But this these structures also are pretty, but they don't have the code. They they don't have the chemical code. They're very un uniform in their structure. These are mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. crystals in the cells, which are not encoded but dna has a code so when you resonate your dna you actually plug in into something much more specific you yeah. have a bar tag yeah. barcode allowing you to plug in in a specific part of the higher level, mm -hmm. higher level mm -hmm. yes and i've also heard and i know you've heard that if our we have two strands activated right but if we had three strands we would be able to move into the fourth dimension more easily is that correct uh, here, I don't have the clean answer. Until now, I was believing that there is no third strand whatsoever. It's all in other dimensions. But mm. in the recent channeling, someone respected was trying to convince me that we are actually building the third strand, which is closer to our dimension. It, it still wouldn't fit there. There is no space. Mm. I have some models of DNA around, but... Uh, uh, I don't want to distract you, but basically okay. there are two, two, two strands and there is yeah. a space for third strand, but if you actually put the molecule there, then a lot of chemistry would be messed up. So there is no mm. space for the third strand. So it should be mm. somewhat other dimensional or... Interesting, okay. Uh, maybe it would be like separate from, from these two strands. You cannot actually make a three-stranded DNA. Mm -hmm. And, and also, let, let me just add one more thing. Like two-stranded DNA makes a lot of sense because 
when you uh, divide cells, they go separate and build a second cell. So two, mm -hmm. separate, build a second one. <laughs> yeah. Two and three, mm -hmm. then the whole process of division uh -huh. is stop. You need like so to reinvent the whole the whole system. So okay. I'm not sure how the biologically how to feed uh, any additional strands in our biology. It's it's pretty. Okay, uh, that's interesting. Stuff. Thank so you. I, if if something like that happens, it should be in parallel realities and parallel layers of the matrix, not in the physical. Well, thank you for explaining that. And about junk, about junk DNA, uh, are you? It, when you want to um, create DNA resonance to upgrade or to break down the veil or to things you were describing, what it can do, uh, is that dealing more with junk DNA or is junk DNA? Yes, yes. Now the junk yeah. DNA is a very nice term. Uh, it's actually a beautiful golden uh, platinum, <laughs> exceptionally uh, valuable. <laughs> Just uh, even yeah. the person who called it junk DNA, it was Francis Crick, the co-discoverer of the double helix. Uh, he still, uh, it was more like a joke. He, he, he fully appreciated that it was very important. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. the, the idea that it is unimportant is um, a misconception by, you know, by others. Anyway, yes. so, uh, the only reason it's called junk is because it's not coding for protein. So we have uh -huh. lots of DNA, a little pieces in it, code for proteins and do the chemical work. And lots of other pieces don't code for proteins and do some other work, which is still undiscovered. And there is a clear indication that there is there are sequences which are important for building the body, which don't yeah. code for proteins. They're called uh, CNS, uh, concert non-transcribed sequences, CNS, concert mm -hmm. non-transcribed sequences. Okay. Uh, and they are concerned between the species. So we, we in mouse, in mice, have the same sequences, mm -hmm. which are good candidates for be being the genes involved in the resonance, and they are not involved in the in the simple chemical work. Mm -hmm. So it's more like vibrational genes, and uh, and we are looking at them. Yes. So in order to activate, forgive, forgive me if this is a very ignorant question, but uh, so in order to activate certain parts of the junk DNA, would scientists or researchers and both of different fields need to find a protein which would activate a particular part of the junk DNA or has nothing to do with protein? Could be, could be that I, <clears throat> the word activate is, poorly defined, right? So one of the yeah. measures is harmony in the DNA. Maybe we don't need any more energy, we just need to harmonize. Right mm -hmm. now the DNA is possibly uh, messed up by lots of vibrations like cell phones, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, yeah. uh, um, all sorts of electric devices, all sorts of uh, power uh, adapters. They all mm -hmm. produce electric fields and, uh, and the food and the ecology. So. Maybe to to activate, you just need to live in some very ecologically pure place, maybe on the top of a mountain in the wilderness, or <laughs> or maybe yeah. on an island. Then your DNA would be activated just fine by harmonization. Ah. Another idea is that um, you need some special energy for activation. DNA it looks like it's a laser pumped with energy, and mm -hmm. whatever you feel like you feel healthy or sick is. Uh, is a amount of harmony, but also it's amount of energy within within the DNA. So if it's pumped properly, then it's vibrating properly mm -hmm. and everybody is happy. All your cells are happy and you are shining. Mm -hmm. Like I meet once in a while, I meet people who are so shining with health. And mm -hmm. I'm always thinking maybe there is something interesting happening with their DNA. I like, see. Uh, Elon Musk is surprises me. Like he sometimes is tired, but there is so much energy there and so much harmony coherence like he can think straight so that that's amazing um uh, i wonder oh, i think do you think it has to do with the way they eat excuse me i don't mean to interrupt your thought but so people like elon musk are a thousand percent focused a thousand percent in their passion i just saw recently on netflix it's called Mission to Mars, but it's like a documentary between 
our progress going to Mars in the past and how Elon got involved in it. And then it's sort of like a theatrical drama of, you know, we're going there, we're already on our way. It's like, it takes us to 2039 or something like that. So interesting documentary and also um, acting it out. But um, so do you think that people who are really shining, aside from having such a, found their passion so completely, do you think they're also eating um, like a vegan diet or vegetarian or this also Good got- question. I'm pretty sure that Elon Musk uh, has a very unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, I think really? he drinks, okay. uh, he doesn't smoke, but he drinks stuff and uh, uh, his lifestyle is, is not very healthy. I think his coherence comes from him being an advanced hybrid first. And uh, he succeeded in uh, straight, straight, straight light in the energy. So he is supported by lots of people. Mm. And he's supported mm -hmm. by lots of uh, angelic forces because I think he is uh, doing very good uh, projects. Uh, so, yeah. so the energy that goes through him is actually is responsible for him uh, harmon okay. being harmonized. But in terms of mission for Mars, I think uh, I think he is pretty advanced. So I don't think he's, he says publicly everything that he knows. Right. I think because he is so much involved with uh, rockets, I, I think he is... Uh, he ought to know everything about aliens much more than we do. And he knows that there are secret bases on Mars. And yeah. The reason he still pushes for flying on to Mars on our uh, outdated technologies is because I think once mainstream gets there, at least some colony, like mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what he promotes, as soon as mainstream people have a colony on Mars, we then graduate officially, by galactic laws, yeah. because if our uh, runaway civilization, our like uh, cabal is on Mars, mm -hmm. it's not counted, it's not us, it's some uh, beings from our species stole some technologies, but mm -hmm. they are not mainstream. And mm -hmm. Musk wants to do mainstream colony on Mars, and then as soon as we have a graduate, they count us as galactic multiplanetary species, exactly what he says. So I think he understands mm -hmm. his agenda much better. Like when he, um, uh, there is that couple of seconds of the recording when they shoot the rocket, uh, launch the rocket, he mm -hmm. speaks in the microphone. Uh, we ask all the entities involved to let us uh, do the launch. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> I think I did it verbatim. We ask all the entities involved to let us do wow. the launch. That's awesome. Yeah. So I think he is very, uh, very much. Uh, educated and he knows yes. what he's doing. Yes. So I was wondering, do you think that what we eat affects the DNA resonance and the uh, um, development? Of course, of course. I mean, uh, when I have a dead, uh, you know, if I produce fresh and you know it's alive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know it's alive because, you know, it's sometimes the, the cabbage grows, the onion grows, it's alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I see it, it died, I, I, I trash it because it's dead. It doesn't have enough vital power. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Like potato can be, can, they can look the same, but one is, can, can still sprout and another is dead already. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, the, the amount of life in, in the produce is, uh, can, can, can be, should be measured. I don't think it's easy to measure yet, but I think it should be measured. So, yes, okay. of course, okay. it's nice to, nice to eat live food. Okay, so I'd like to ask you um, one of my last questions is, uh, so where are you going from here? Um, because you, are you going to be writing another book? Are you doing, I know you're doing your DNA resonance work. Are you going to continue with your journey with the extraterrestrial galaxy um, developments and neighborhood, things like that? You mentioned to me once you were going through uh, you were sort of like changing your path. I wasn't quite sure what that meant, if I can ask you. I, uh, I have a feeling that the new idea of a new book is uh, brewing. Mm -hmm. it, hasn't, it hasn't emerged yet. There are, basically, the idea of the book is, first, they have to send it to you. You have to receive it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. sometimes you start writing before receiving it, and then you kind of grab it better. And um, 
part of that is to see that there is a demand, there is interest on, on mm -hmm. among people. They need to learn something. They need to know something. So, yeah. so I'm looking for that, and um, I'm very excited about telepathy. So maybe something related to telepathy would be interesting. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, still behind of doing my homework. I need to do my homework to learn about telepathy more. Um, but right now I'm uh, I'm actually doing my science and uh, we, are may we actually what right now we are looking at the DNA at junk DNA sequences and mm -hmm. we are uh, writing grant proposals to uh -huh. DARPA and to National Institutes of Help Help of Health mm -hmm. yeah. and <laughs> 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 <For> <laughs> help. <laughs> National Institutes of Health and um, looking for other sources uh, and looking for investors actually we have a yeah. certain, um, prototype which uh, is designed for for a mass market mm -hmm. uh, it does require an age approval it's um, it's a mass market device using uh, advanced uh, wave mm -hmm. technology for uh, well-being uh, and mm -hmm. for wellness mm -hmm. and, uh, this is a very realistic project and um, uh, it would be nice, nice to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very pretty, pretty feeling pretty good that we are yeah. getting it right, and um, oh, there, awesome. will, mm -hmm. there will be uh, that kind of will uh, pave the path to, to the DNA-based technologies. Uh, right now, it's it's uh, the idea is linked to DNA, but not well, uh, I would say, well experimentally optimized so in this yeah. devices i can predict it will affect dna but and it will affect it safely but more experiment but i'm uh, i can only put out something which is safe so yes for more advanced formulas i need to do the experiments to make sure it is doing what we expect and that is safe right so yes. so for that we need uh, a more funding but the initial one is using tested technologies which affect dna in a positive way and they have been around on the market. Some technologies have been already for uh, like 20, 30 years. We are pretty confident mm -hmm. they are safe and mm -hmm. uh, um, we just combine them in a new interesting way, which is novel and mm -hmm. uh, suitable for the American mass market. So mm -hmm. I think that will open the, uh, open the energy flow for more advanced technologies and the ultimate uh, breakthrough is actually being able to understand the language of the DNA, vibration language of the DNA, which we are doing right now with a little bit of funding, but I think we need more funding to do it with more people. Right now it's like four people doing that, but it would be nice to do it like with more like 20 mm. people and yes. uh, experts, 20 experts. Right now we're doing it wow. with low qualified force, but yes. uh, we still have be able to do it. So, uh, and we are looking already at the graphs of um, resonances in DNA. I think that's very exciting, mm -hmm. but uh, yes. not enough to publish yet, hopefully soon. Okay. Uh, my main paper just was accepted. I'm editing the um, uh, proofs, proofs and uh, mm -hmm. my, my the, this part of the theory, which I can share with the, with the people uh, is, uh, is already out there, would be like published very soon, okay. like within weeks. Sorry, oh, great. Time. So, is it something that we could understand as lay people? Would we be able to grasp what, what that? I, uh, I think maybe it's like 50% understandable by lay people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wrote it on a I mean, there is, I'm combining the ideas of chemistry, quantum physics, which I don't know very well, but you know, whatever I could gra gra mm -hmm. grasp of quantum physics biology mm -hmm. and a little bit of esoterics there as well and telepathy a little bit of there but it's 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 a scientific paper and uh, when i combine it i assume there is no expert that knows everything you know mm -hmm. i'm the only one who combined it for the first time here so yeah so it and every scientist is an expert in their specific field so i had to write it in a language which is understandable for uh for the non-expert in the field mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say maybe 50% uh, everybody could understand, but also I have the the, the uh, 
the video presentation, which I think is uh, is spoken even on simpler language, so I invite people mm. to to watch it, and you can find it by joining the group on Facebook. It's called DNA Resonance. Facebook okay. DNA Resonance. Join it. Okay, great. And, uh, and there was my presentation. Actually, several oh. presentations. Oh, that's right. Thank you so much. And that's right. thank you for mentioning that again. For those who may have forgotten to follow up, like me, I forgot to follow up on that. Uh -huh. uh, well, and thank you for that. So now you founded Human Colony uh -huh. in 2000, oh, I believe, and co-founded with Jim. So where do you see that going? It has evolved yes. up and down since then. And right, the humanity changes, and we see. Uh, on one hand, there is a lot of more interest in uh, metaphysics and aliens. On the other hand, there is so much, many more channelers and groups and teachers. So uh, our, the number of views on YouTube fluctuates, a number of people and activity in the human colony group on Facebook is also, it's called HUCLO, H-U-C-O-L-O. Uh, yes. The activity also fluctuates. On so some days we have activity, on some days it's all silent. So <laughs> it's it's a process. And um, where would you like to see it go? What would be your vision for it if you could influence it more, for example? And the best uh, the best present for it, which I did, was to let people organize themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, until uh, recently, I was driving it and spending a lot of my energy and mm -hmm. uh, controlling it. And now I released the controls. Finally, when I got Jim, Angie, and Karen, and Mark actually, mm -hmm. are coordinated together to take charge of it. So mm -hmm. I gave them all the controls, including the, uh, you know, everything, everything. Mm -hmm. So, and whenever they need help, I give them help. And now my main message for them is that I just noticed that YouTube is being killed by Google. Mm. Google bought it. Uh, when when the Google didn't touch it, it was developing well, but now Google messes it up more and more. Mm. So it looks like YouTube is uh, slowing down and Facebook is still alive and prospering. So I think the people's activity will, will move from YouTube to Facebook just because uh, there is more better communication there. When in YouTube, mm -hmm. anybody leaves a comment, it is unnoticed by, by other people. Mm -hmm. When yeah. in Facebook, people leave the comment, it's, mm -hmm. it's noticed, it's the conversation mm -hmm. is live, it's mm -hmm. very valuable. So, so uh, now Facebook has live videos and has uh, video posts, so I think Facebook will take over the mm. uh, YouTube in within maybe a few years, maybe 10 years, but the path is, let's move to Facebook. Unfortunately, mm. I, I, I'm not a big, uh, I don't love it, but you know that's where the life is at the moment, where the energy is. Mm. I hope that in some future we'll have a, even a better version mm. of it, but well, I know for now I would say let's, uh, move to Facebook and that would be a, mm -hmm. a, a better medium for our communication. Mm -hmm. In terms of, so it's format, in terms of the future of the community, I think we have a great development of uh, this grassroots channeling group. So they just, uh, it was started by Anya Krupski, but uh, then uh, other people uh, actually make it happen. Mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> all those. So it's just for the people to come together. Mm -hmm. uh, we give you a tool. We pay for the Zoom subscription so you can grab the Zoom subscription and do mm -hmm. the, the come togethers. And I think telepathy practice is great and just reconnecting. So for many people, it is just the fact that other people of the same mindset are are exist and communicate that's that's sufficient mm -hmm. so there is not much more needed is just to connect people together one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one, few, mm -hmm. few many to many mm -hmm. yeah. so we provide the platform and the advantage of our platform over others is just you come and play you don't have to actually even pay you come and play so that's the advantage in all the other systems it's much more structured 
as much more expensive, somewhat more expensive and uh, yes. much more organized. So here it's a, a playground where anybody can come and play as long and as thank you are mothers. Yes, and thank you for paying for it at Zoom link consistently that it can be used for that reason. Thank you. Uh, and uh, telepathy, I think, is the answer. So we need to develop telepathic communities where people telepathically link mm -hmm. and speak. Yeah. Okay. And so, I, I'm sure it already exists, but it just didn't, it's subconscious. We already yeah. telepathically connect to lots of people, but we don't realize that it's happening. And I think we if we come up with, realize that it's real. Yes, absolutely. And I think if we come up with a good uh, way to practice it, because sometimes we're not sure. Right, how. right, right. Um, I think poker I, is great. Poker is one of the great telepathic yeah. games. Oh, what's it called? Booker? Booker. Can you spell that? Okay, poker. Do I pronounce it incorrectly? Oh, poker. Yeah, poker. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying so. You mean the you mean the card game poker? Yeah, card game poker. Oh no, I can't. sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> I thought you were coming with some new new thing I hadn't heard before. Yeah, new telepathic training using poker card game. Yep. Oh, because but I think some some of that sort of maybe um, <laughs> there, there are other games. Yeah. Um, I won't yeah. name, name them, but some other games with role playing where people can mm -hmm. telepathically, where you can get it, you know, get advantage by telepathically connected to other people. So in poker, it's yeah. very clear. If you're coupled with someone else, you take over the game. So any other games where you can telepathically mm -hmm. connect and uh, and and be uh, get a positive feedback on that, get uh, rewarded mm -hmm. for that. Get you know when you get points mm -hmm. for. Brownie points for uh, telepathy. That's that's where <laughs> emotion is involved, right? Yes. yes. I, I, I think that's the future. I think once we get there, maybe human colony will be the first one to develop telepathic community. That would be great. But uh, oh, when wow. we're channeling, I mean, once we get at least three people telepathically connected, mm -hmm. then it will ex explode. Then it will explode. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's the capability is already there. It's uh, a number of whales which need to be uh, accurately, precisely tuned so we can actually function in normal world, but also we can we can telepathically transmit information. Well, I was running a group for a while, uh, and we had some very spiritually experienced people there, and one would say something, and the other would say, "That's exactly what I just thought." and so it seemed like many members of the group, and I think the key is to kind of keep one's spiritual life growing and have interaction vertically in a higher level and also with other people. You know, the heart, like a Chikur said, telepathy is a matter of the heart also from the heart. But in any case, however, these individuals kept their spiritual life at a certain level, but when they met with each other in the group, like almost everybody they either saw the same thing and when they had their eyes closed and doing a blessing or they had the exact same thought. Um, so that would be great if that could be expanded because that was like more, a, a, a more of a private group. Yeah, it wasn't that known. So that's what you're saying, right? If we, it becomes known where we're, we really can do that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of this has to do with the fact that some of the members who were meeting had a lot of past lives together. They were from the same planetary system. And sure, yeah, I'm, I know. There's a kinship I, there. Kinship I'm involved. looking for uh, partners in my, uh, in my science business development and uh, LinkedIn is a good source. And I look mm -hmm. at the photographs and sometimes I just recognize them. Yeah. Well, I say, I know that person. Yeah. I, I don't know them from here. I just recognize the vibration and then, yeah. well, uh, for some of them, when I connect to them, we, we send emails simultaneously to each other with the same thoughts. So, you know, for me, it's oh. a great, great confirmation that we are. Yes. In, it's yeah. not necessarily that I come up with that thought and send it. It's, it's from here. It feels like I come up, but maybe we just are tuned to the same, uh, same mm -hmm. source and the yeah. source does the fault. But we are yeah. participating in that when we are tuned in, we put our energy in there. And when we synchronously, simultaneously uh, tune into the same frequency, that's telepathy. Yes, yes, thank you. 
Okay, do you have any closing remarks? Before yeah, thank we... you very much. It was a pleasure. It was a great interview. Thanks, Safira. Thank you. It was very enjoyable also for me. Thank you so much. And as you all see, Max is very brilliant and wise and also kind. And I met you for the first time uh, back in 2000, last year at Dansville after. Oh, right. yeah. uh -huh. And you were very, you were quiet and supportive and a big loving teddy bear and, uh, and humble, as brilliant as you are. And it was, uh, I hope you still stay tuned and stay with us in the human colony development, or Yukolo as you call it. Absolutely. So I, I also wanted to add that uh, if anybody wants to take more interviews of me, mm -hmm. I'm open because I, uh, I think that format allows me to uh, say things that I cannot say otherwise. Right. And there's yeah. a, I, I will see if it is popular, but I th hope that some <laughs> people would, uh, at least for me, it was, was therapeutic to share that. I'm kind of pumped with the information which I want to share. So yeah. please help yeah. me to relieve this information to YouTube. And hopefully there will be some people who would appreciate that. Yes, I, and, and, and yes. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Once in a while I get feedback and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the feedback. Some feedback is uh, very helpful, very helpful. And uh, yeah. of course there is negative feedback and I just you know enjoy blocking people who leave negative feedback. So yeah, feel <laughs> free to give negative feedback as well. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, I was going to say that different personalities bring out different questions and different answers. So, you know, you could oh, have right. like, you could have a different interview every day this week and it would be just fascinating at what would, what would come out and be stimulated through the questions. So, right. yeah, this kind of give and take is wonderful. Yeah, so, I just wanted to mention that when, when someone is doing the channeling, the person who is the question ask the questions is as important for the content of the mm -hmm. channel as the person who channels because yes through the quantum physics they form the system it's consciousness to consciousness and um you hear what you are ready to hear what you're you're ripe you're ready you developed yourself to a certain level so you need to hear mm -hmm. something and that something comes to you so when a yeah. different person comes, it will be a different channeling. So yeah. the listener, yeah. the questioner is as important as, as the speaker. I agree. And you are also a great interviewer yourself. So thank you very much. Namaste. And we will see each other again soon. Namaste. Thank you. Okay.